Welcome to the Calyrex Game Corner's Pokemon D&D campaign. Featuring Cindy, a hot-headed teen with a penchant for arson. Gimli, an admirable father seeking to reunite his family. Elodie, a fun-loving baker with a whimsical heart. And Schmidt, a courageous young man searching for his purpose with a duck. Together, they make the Quacko Paco, and this is Dunsparce and Drampa. Thanks to Alpha Bud, now known as the Aspect of Growth, Mewtwo, who was rescued from Team NRG by Schmidt using the Master Ball, was able to perform one feat of immense psychic power before entering a hibernation-like rest in the basement of Cindy's grandparents' Berry Farm. The Paco elected to use Mewtwo's great power to conduct a future sight on the Paco's former companion, Symmetra Red Tree, aka Sam, who was mysteriously taken away after enduring a meteorite impact to her face following the arrival of Deoxys in Gravity Falls. With knowledge of her potential whereabouts, Schmidt rushed out of the berry farm with Quacko, the Farfetch'd, and Patricia the Altaria, and broke into the Hoenn branch office of Sylph Company in Mauville City. After triggering numerous alarms and ascending an elevator shaft, Schmidt finds himself face-to-face with a security guard with a magmortar on the 25th floor. Schmidt, you may roll initiative. Oh, we're doing initiative? Oh, yeah. Okay. Even if you don't engage in combat, we are going turn-based. Okay. Dirty 23. Okay. That was a natural 20. If that, that matters for me. Your first roll is a crit? Yeah. <laughs> pretty good. I pre rolled a little bit before. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Schmidt, you will be going first. Just to give some context, you're on this floor. You're outside of one of two elevator shafts, and you're very close to the stairwell. It seems like they occupy the same kind of part of the building. And someone has emerged from the stairwell onto this floor. They are dressed in like a security ish uniform, not police, but building security. And they are joined by a large fiery duck Pokemon, presumably Magmortar. Uh, Additionally, the sprinkler system is going off because you pulled a fire alarm. So uh, things are pretty wet. Uh, There's a like sprinkler systems usually use like not the best water. So there's kind of a dirty musky smell about, and it's causing kind of a fog in the area. Um, You have a general idea, a general layout of what the floor looks like. There are offices that surround the corners of the floor. There's a little lounge area. Um, You see like a reception desk and a little standee pretty close to where you are. Um, What is your plan of action? Okay, because he came in and he like said something, right? He said like, what are you doing here? Or Yeah, some security thing like stop right there. Like, what are you doing? And Mac Mortar seems to be posed threateningly. Okay, this is going to be silly. Okay. Have you ever seen the movie Die Hard? Uh, yes, it's been a while. Okay. Um, there's a scene where the main villain, I forget his name, but he figures out that uh, Bruce Willis is on the roof. Okay. And so he goes up to the roof and then, like, for some reason gets separated from his gun. Uh-huh. And then Bruce Willis finds him while he doesn't have his gun. So he, like, fakes an American accent and pretends to be scared. Okay. So Schmidt is going to <laughs> fake... <laughs> Uh, Elodie's Calosian accent. Okay. So, quote unquote French. And he's gonna be like, "Oh, oh, I, I am lost. I am so scared. Uh, uh, uh please help me, sir." Wow. Yeah, I love that. Please give yeah, I me go for deception. Yeah. Yes, deception. Correct. Which I am proficient in. Okay. Yeah. Let's see it. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, the security guard is quite suspicious, but is convinced. The security guard says, oh, all right, man. Yeah, let's get you out of here. The fire alarm's going off. Let's take the stairs, all right? I said, yes, I was on higher floor trying to find my way down when alarms went off. Uh, This guy says, yeah, all right. He hasn't really heard a Colosseum accent. He doesn't super know what's going on. Most of the business that this company does is between Hoenn and Kanto, so that's most of the accents that they know. Um, He is convinced. Uh, He will uh, open the stairwell ushering you to go first but he has while he believes you he has like a concerned expression as does mag mortar they're both like "Mm, better you know make sure this guy gets out of the building safely okay so do you exit Mm, trying to figure out gameplay from here yeah because he's ushering me to go first so i won't be in like a advantage position right for what it's (laughs) worth i'm still kind of considering us to be an initiative so i'm planning on one more action or check or something mm-hmm. yeah i guess i'll just follow him for a little bit 
Okay, so you walk through the threshold to enter the stairwell? Yeah. Okay, you see stairs ascending and descending. Where do you go? Uh, I guess got to keep up the front and descend a little bit. Okay, you start heading down. You see in this stairwell um, that sprinklers are not going off in here. Uh, but like water is kind of pouring through through the f- doors on the floor and kind of dripping down from above. Uh, it's concrete. The tips of the steps are painted blue, uh, just for visibility. There are lights going off for the different alarms, as well as when you as you see as you start to descend, you see at the bottom that there's a big, uh, like white and blue sign that is labeled with Silfco and it says twenty four. Uh, assuming that is the twenty fourth floor as you descend, so uh, you're gonna. Make okay. your way down. Yeah, um, as a little bit of a retcon, Schmidt's gonna make his way down very like hurried. Okay, and he's gonna like be pretending to be scared, like, oh no, oh no, I need to get out of here. And then he's gonna, <laughs> it's starting to like slip into German. Yeah, <laughs> it is just vaguely European accent. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, but he is going to run as far ahead of the guard as possible uh, it... to get to that floor. Interesting. Are you gonna consider this as a dash? yeah okay because it's stairs um i'm going to need an athletics or an acrobatics Mm, nine total okay um nine lands you at no penalty but also not quite a proper dash you you descend down the stairs quickly but you trip a little bit you catch yourself with the railing but you end up not going a full 60 feet for a dash uh you know it would be eh. Okay. If it's stairs, it's not 30 feet either, but you're descending. You don't go down to the 23rd floor, basically. And the guy behind you is also moving quickly because he's escorting someone out of a potentially hazardous situation. But he says, hey, be careful. I know we're trying to get out of here, but watch your step. Okay, so have I made it to the door of the 24th floor? Uh, we will say yes. Before you do anything, I'm going to make elections for the guard and gotcha. Magmortar and... I may not describe them to you, depending. Okay. I'm not describing them to you. What are you, It is your turn in initiative. What are you doing? Uh, Just like in a very acting panicked in way. Uh, he's going to open the door and just run through the floor. Just be like, I have to get out of here. Oh, okay. You're trying to... And then the second he's out of sight, Schmidt wants to find an area where he can just like disappear. Okay. Like uh, a cabinet he can crawl on top of, a table he can crawl under... Okay. Yeah. Yes. Give roll me a perception while you do that. Uh 14. Okay. As you turn into the 24th floor, the door is not locked. You are able to just go in there. Mm-hmm. Uh you see to your right a guard ascending the stairs. Um this is someone very similar kind of outfit, the Silfco, you know, kind of guard look get up. They're carrying a flashlight and they are being followed by a large tiger striped dog Pokémon um who is rushing up the stairs. Uh and t- as you go through the door, he begins to shout to the other guard, like, did you get them? Did you find them? And then you run in there, and the guard behind you goes, hey, wait! And uh, you have entered the 24th floor of the self-company. Um, it looks like on this floor, some people were in fact working, and they have since evacuated. Um, there are some soggy papers on a reception desk in front of you. Um, some doors to offices are left open. Uh, it looks like there's a chair that got knocked over because someone was rushing out. And for the sake of convenience, we will use the map that I've drawn for the 25th floor. It's just slightly different. We'll say that the uh, northwest corner office is smaller and divided into two or three. Uh, There's still a cubicle formation in the middle. Uh, Instead of a conference room, they just have additional offices on the southern part. So we can more or less use what's going on in this map. Okay. Um... It would also be rotated. I don't think that really matters. But because you're descending like a, a spiral staircase... It's not like a spiral, like one of those thin, elegant staircases, but you know how like big buildings are. They The, the staircases yeah, yeah, yeah. turn. So if you wanted to turn your map like 90 degrees to the right, then <laughs> that would uh, more kind of accurately illustrate it, but it should be the same. Uh, if you're looking for somewhere yeah. to hide, there are two open offices, one to your left and one to your right. There's also a reception desk directly in front of you and about a 40-foot jaunt deeper into the floor. You can find a mess of cubicles, and then there's various other rooms that you can't entirely make out what might be there. I'm guessing the office on my on to the north is going to be the quickest spot if we're still in initiative going by that speed. Okay, so just the closest office. Yeah. Okay, this one does have its door cracked. Um, you are welcome to enter it. Yes. Okay. 
Um, you rush Enter, in. And then I'll completely close the door behind me. Okay. You do that. It clicks, presumably locks. And you look around and you see there's a sprinkler in the center of this room. This room is what? 15 feet by 15 feet. I guess that's 30 square feet. That doesn't sound right, mm -hmm. but something like that. Against the window to the north, there is a 10 foot wide table. Uh, there's a chair. There's a computer and a bunch of files on the desk that are just ruined. Just not in a great spot. For what it's worth, the door does open to the desk that is facing the window. So like if someone enters this room, uh, the desk, you would sit in the same direction that the door swings open to, if that makes sense. Uh, there's also mm -hmm. a cabinet next to the desk. Um, we'll say that's your turn in initiative. You've used your movement, so I'll give you two actions. So it's just the desk and some files, nothing else? No cabinet, no? There, there is a cabinet, or maybe pseudo-closet cabinet. Like, it's tall. Like, it it, sits, it situates itself um, in the corner uh, by the desk. It is... Would I be able to, like, slide on top of that? You could, like, crouch on top of it, but it is, like... You're roughly six feet tall. If you stood on top, you're you would have to bend because of the ceiling. It's right. not it's not I'm like a filing thinking, cabinet. Like, it's like a pseudo closet, and it has filing underneath. I'm just thinking, like, if I jump up there and then like wrap myself in my cloak, would that be a good hiding spot? It is a hiding spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there is a window in this office. A large window. The okay. entire northern wall. It's a 15 foot bay window. Um, Floor to ceiling. Gotcha. Yep. You can see. Okay, we'll go with that, and then we have an escape route if we need it. Okay, sure. Uh, to orient yourself in Marvel City, as you're looking out this northern window, um, you can see the the central terrace that is in Marvel City, where the Statue of May was. That looks like it's under construction. People are milling about. There's there's some attention that is pointed towards this building, but uh, people are just kind of going about their day. It is midday, late afternoon, after all. Uh, no one is particularly concerned about the happenings at Self Company. You do see the the refurbished Mauville Gym also to the north. And if you look way out in the distance, you can see like dusty winds from the Route 111 desert. Anyway, so you choose to hide on top of the cabinet? Yeah. Okay. Question. Yes. This is kind of like an off, uh, off topic question. Yeah. There's no like battle tower, right? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. If there is, you have a like, That's it. normally where it would be, it was right there north of Mauville. Ne next next to the wind straight home correct yeah. um if there is one you didn't visit it but perhaps okay and i don't see it from my vantage point i if you wanted to see it i might make you roll for it because the description i gave you was free okay it, it's irrelevant okay <laughs> just curious huh? got it yeah you could always check when you are not in initiative if you'd like Mm -hmm. um so what so you're gonna jump on this cabinet and you're going to stealth it up i'm gonna wrap your wrap myself in the cloak to make it look like almost like a bag was just kind of thrown up there okay yeah you roll me a stealth uh i rolled a 17 my proficiency is four okay my dex is plus three and then another plus two no that sounds right so what's that total 20 something 27 26 30 yeah 21 24 25 26 yeah okay yeah you hide yourself, to your knowledge, pretty dang well. Uh, the lights are off in here, um, but there is some ambient light coming from the north, but you're not on the eastern or western window, so um, you're not getting the majority of it. So it's a little dim. It could be brighter, could be darker. Is I, I suppose you have one more action. What would it be? Brace myself. Okay. Um, do you, are you saying you want to prepare an action? No, just praying that this works. Okay. You do that. You say put for what feels like a long time, but is in reality probably less than 10 seconds. Um, you hear murmuring from the door that you've closed, um, and you hear like a mechanical ding sound as a badge opens the door. A guard who you do not recognize steps in, followed by a Pokemon that can, is simply described as an icy floating head with a grimacing face. Peers around, looks around, does not notice you. You hear them shout out as the alarms blare in the background, not in here! And uh, you hear murmurs and commotions further outside, and you there's a voice that comes on on the radio that says, I want that floor secured. No one goes in or out. And people, you hear the sound of footsteps because this office is adjacent to the stairwell. Um, you hear the sounds of more bodies piling in to the 24th floor. At the moment, there is no one in this office, but you know that directly outside, there are at least three guards, if not more. What do you do? Okay. We are staying put. Okay. And you're just going to wait it out? Yep. Okay, more and more people are coming up. Do you have a time limit on how long you like are willing to wait? Or are you just truly waiting? Uh, just want to until I stop hearing like any sort of 
like footsteps or murmuring or anything. Okay. The first change that you will notice in probably about five to ten minutes is that one of the alarms is disabled, um, and that is the fire alarm. Uh, the water stops pouring out. It has been determined by whoever runs these systems that there is no fire threat. Uh, there's an, an announcement on an intercom that is supposedly peaking, speaking to people who are directly outside, but you can also hear it inside, and it says, Thank you for your adherence to the fire alarm. We are investigating a cause. Please remain outside, or if you are able, go home for the work day. You get the feeling that perhaps office workers had the end of their day ruined right around 3 p.m., and they were just like, eh, I'm calling it. <laughs> not worth going back in there. One alarm is still blaring, and it is not the fire alarm. It's the man kind of intruder alarm. Uh, mm-hmm. And you hear the sound of more footsteps, more boots rushing in. As you remain up there, you hear... Uh, someone say oh great police are here uh and you hear the sound of furniture being thrown around people are you know rummaging through stuff opening doors you could probably assume that all the doors are open at this point and you hear like an investigator talking to the familiar voice of the first guard who you convinced that you were from Kalos and you were panicking and confused. They say, yeah, you seem pretty scared. I thought something was a little suspicious, but I just thought, you know, if we can get him out of the building, we'll, we'll figure all this out. We started descending and he rushed in here and I don't, I can't, I don't know where he went. Uh, he seemed like a, guy, a nice guy. I just can't find him. Uh, you hear another voice shout out, who's got the tapes? Who's got the tapes? Um, it seems like they're trying to get some more details from their security footage. This is all probably happening with, from the moment you perch up on this cabinet for about 15 minutes. I'd like to check back in with you to see if you have any adjustment to your plan here. Not so far. Okay. They are going to begin conducting a thorough search of each office. Uh, there's no point in me describing their searching of the other offices, but you just, just so you know they are doing it. Uh, mm-hmm. And then a team of three guards. No, sorry. Two guards and one police officer enter this smallish room, uh, 30 square feet for our purposes on this map. Each of them are also accompanied by Pokemon. One of the guards is joined by a metallic looking bipedal cat with razor sharp claws that seems to be uh, quite investigative. It is behaving almost like a dog. It is sniffing around and looking at things. The police officer is accompanied by a stylized kind of pink and gray looking bipedal pig Pokemon. It seems it might be capable of some psychic powers, perhaps. Um, And standing outside of the door, you do not see the full Pokemon, but you do have range of the door. If you peeked out, uh, you see what is really just described as a large head of curly hair and two large horns or antlers that are sticking out on either side. You would actually re- remember this Pokemon from before you entered Meteor Falls. There was a traveling merchant who used this to pull their cart. It is the same species. It is not entering the office. It is too big for the door. So there are three individuals in here and two Pokemon, and they are looking around. I'm going to require another stealth check with disadvantage. Okay. What did you get? Uh, 18 and a 13 were my two rolls on the disadvantage, so... Makes it a dirty 20, plus 2 makes it a dirty 22. Okay, yeah. You are still yes. concealed. Broken. Yeah. <laughs> for for however it is possible. They clearly see your person, like they understand that something is up there, but they think it is some kind of soggy decoration or a lampshade or a piece of furniture or something. So the majority of them leave. Remaining is the individual with, I will describe it now as a berserker. Um, there's a guard who stands in the door threshold and you hear a voice on a megaphone uh, in the common area where the cubicles and the reception desk are saying, nobody leaves until we find him. And uh, everyone kind of agrees. And uh, the berserker guard stays put at the door threshold facing out, not looking into the office much because clearly there's nothing going on here. Um, the searching continues. Do you have a new plan of action or are you just continuing to hide? Um. Mm. Man, this is a rough spot. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Why couldn't they just let me Batman into the office? <laughs> I guess Batman wanted to trip the alarms. Well, because they know you went in here, and it is unlikely you could have escaped. Um, yeah. <laughs> in other means, so. They don't know where I am, but they know I'm on this floor. Correct. They can't find you, but they're not going to leave until they find you. 
there's rumors of security tapes. So they're while they don't have them now, they may be able to produce a more specific location. I have an idea to try to use air cutter in some way, because with the office I'm in, I have a pretty good advantage of the stairs, right? Not you can't see it, but this is the office that is closest to the stairs. So, yes, I wouldn't say okay. advantage, but they are close by. You do have Quacko out, which is convenient. Yeah, potentially. Do we abandon the plan? We have an escape route, but there is a man and a berserker. At least those two blocking your access to the stairs. I mean, we have a window. <laughs> you have a large window, correct? Yeah, we could just eject out this whole plan. But then I wouldn't get to see Sam. Uh, I think Schmidt's going to wait it out for a little bit longer. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's pretty secure in his game plan of escape if he needs to, but okay. Uh, I don't know what else to do. Sure, that's fair. Could you roll me just a straight d20? Yeah. This is for NPC stuff. More fun <laughs> if you roll. I'm scared. That was a natural one. <laughs> okay. I think this is to your benefit. Because of that natural one, you were rolling for the efficacy of accessing the tapes. There's a conversation happening in the common area, and they're like, what do you mean they are water damaged? Why is there even a sprinkler in the security room? <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, it looks like currently, while they might have a digital record, they can't access it right now because they don't have a means to do so. Um, this does not change their plans for our remaining stalwarts guarding the 24th floor. There's more conversation. There's more. No one goes in or out. And everyone says, yes, sir. And uh, you hear moving around. People are still like, you hear plumbing being removed out of a bathroom, right? Like people are like really trying to scour all the nooks and crannies, but they're not concerned mm. with this room that you're in still. Um, it is still being guarded by a self coast security guard and a berserker. The berserker is kind of just chilling, licking itself, grooming itself, sitting on the ground like a cat does. Even though it's bipedal, I'm not sure how that's supposed to look, but it's fine. No, Any you just said like a person, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that looks kind of funny. Down, yeah. Legs out. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, that's what uh, probably how Berserker sits. Any updates to your plan? Are you still stealthing? I guess we're just still stealthing. Wait it out. Okay, I will ask for another stealth check with a disadvantage. I'm not uh, looking to force an issue. It's just mm-hmm. you have only been hiding for a while, and who knows if something yep. creaks or you get a cramp or. Nineteen. Nineteen. That is still good enough. Probably about 30 to 45 minutes has passed. The alarm for the intruder has gone off by now. You can hear some activity in the stairwells, and you even hear the elevator ding a couple of times. Uh, But this floor is still solidly secured. Uh, Why don't you give me another D20 for NPC actions? Three. Okay, they decide that uh, they are going to be installing cameras on this floor. They don't trust any of the ones that were currently installed because they think that they might be water damaged. So there's little tripods going up um, all over. And someone who is joined by a little mole Pokemon, short little arms that seem to have like sharp claws at the end, uh, follows a a nerdy looking IT looking guy into the room to set up a camera with a tripod. Um, This is like a circular room camera. Uh, It captures in a panoramic style. Um, and it's just gotcha. set up in the middle of the room. Uh, and then the guy with the preserver lets him back out. That is the NPC update. It's been about 30 or 45 minutes. The sun is like starting to set a little bit. It is going down. You you have a northern window, but you can just see by the beams of light that it is starting to set in the west. Any updates to Schmidt's plan? Do we think we've missed the window? For We're it. calling the vision. What was the time of day? Uh, because Metro did see a window. Yeah, roll a, roll a history. Dirty 20. Okay, you recollect that it was around dusk or twilight. So around now. Uh, Yes. uh, Fuck. Okay. Did we ever gather which office was Symmetra's on the 25th floor? You did not select one. Fuck. You got there, you have a floor plan, you do not know which one belongs to her. I am assuming it is going to be the one in the bottom left. That's the only one with the desk in the middle, right? And when we visited Symmetra before, her desk was in the middle. That does have a middle desk. You could roll another history check for when you saw her. Yeah. Okay. I will do that. 7, 16. You do recall her having a middle desk. That is true. Okay. We are using the map a little bit, maybe, but we could also maybe justify 
the knowledge that Schmidt may not have of the floor plan, despite having a map with maybe in the directory, there was a layout of how the floor looked. But yeah, just for description, I suppose the top left corner of the 25th floor, you're on the 24th, has a large L office with an L corner desk. The top right corner has a, uh, it's just a corner office with um, a standard 10 foot desk against the top right corner. Uh, The bottom right office is split into two offices uh, with a dividing wall in the middle uh, with desks against the wall. And the bottom left office is a singular office, fairly large, with a desk in the middle of the room. Okay. What are you thinking? Schmidt is going to jump out the window again. Okay. Um, That's going to require some some damage. So I guess I'll need a strength check from Schmidt or Quacko. Uh, it will be Schmidt. Ooh. How is he doing it? Is he just throwing his body at it? He, yeah, jumping off, throwing his body at it. He's going to do it kind of arm, like metal arm first. Okay, that will try help. Try to break the window with that. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, the metal arm uh, made of draconic skarmory feathers. So pretty yeah. powerful metal. Is this just a straight strength check? Nothing else to it? I don't think so. I, yeah, you're trying to break something. I think that's athletics, maybe. Are you proficient in athletics? I am proficient in athletics. Yeah, we'll just say athletics. That's fine. 30, 25. Yeah, that is successful. Uh, you you bust out of the northern window, I'm assuming, correct? Yes. Okay, yeah, you leap off of the cabinet, over the desk. The guard and the berserker turn around quickly, and they say, there he is! And uh, you bust out of the window. I need dex saves from you and Quacko. 13 from Quacko and 8 from Schmidt. Uh, is that a natural one? No. Okay, what was the natural rule? You said just straight... Dex check, right? Yeah, correct. Dex save, yeah. No athletics, no anything. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's, it was a five and a seven on the die, so. Okay. 12 for Quacko, because Quacko does plus five and Schmidt does plus three, so eight. Okay. We're having both of you fail this. Um, Quacko is going to be taking 16 points of damage and Schmidt will take eight. Shit, Quacko passed out. Um, as you jump out of the window, Quacko gets sliced up by the shattered glass and um his previously determined face becomes unconscious uh his features go limp and uh, his leak begins to slip out of his feathers as you fall from the 25th floor of self company in mauville what do you do uh i make a grab for quacko and i send out patricia okay just have to full ejecto okay um give me just a generic dexterity check because you're multitasking. You're kind of doing a lot here. Where was that rolled last round? Um, 19. Okay, yeah. Schmidt um, mustering all of his might to not only send out Patricia as Altaria to hopefully carry them to safety, but also grab Quacko and make sure that uh, he is safe. You see that uh, a couple of shards of glass have sliced some of his feathers, but otherwise, other than being unconscious, he seems to be okay. Um, he is gripping onto his leak for now in an unconscious state. And you get on top of Patricia. Uh, roll a perception real quick. I'm looking for a 12 or higher. Uh, I did not make it. Okay. Something is happening you do not know. Uh, what is Schmidt doing? Okay. Schmidt is going to fly northward. Okay. Just in case anyone's like trailing him. And when he feels like he's sufficiently like out of range of Sylphco and the cameras and all that, he's then he's going to turn east to go to the berry farm. Okay. You just start going northwards, like towards the wind straight house, towards the desert, past the gym, correct? Yeah, maybe like r- wrap around the outside of Mauville. Okay. You do that. Give me an additional perception check, please. And he's doing this like as low to the ground as he can. Oh, he's going to descend? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. All right. Like just to try to keep that, like just to try to be as stealthily as possible. Okay. Making his way out of here. Okay. Is, does that mean like street level or just like maybe second story or what does that mean to you? Like second, third story. Yeah. Top building tops. Okay. Like maybe like slightly under, like having to maneuver through buildings, but. Okay. Sure. Not like too low to the ground. Uh, perception check, right? Yep. That is plus one. That is a 19. That's very good. Um, I will give you both checks that you missed. Well, sorry, this is a new check and then the one that you missed. The one that you missed was coming from the direction of Rustboro City on the west. Um, There's a helicopter that has uh, headed in your direction and has begun to circle around the Sylph Company building. This new perception check is for three bird Pokemon that are mysteriously 
trailing behind you. There is a sharp-beaked brown Pokemon that you recognize from the Johto region. Being a frequent mail carrier, this is Fira. Uh, additionally, there is a blue and red Pokemon that looks like something that you've seen in the trees in the Hoenn region, but you don't know the name of the Pokemon. And uh, there's another Pokemon that resembles a swan. It has uh, blue plumage on its chest, and it is primarily white with black feet. Um, they are flying in a formation. Uh, just It seems like directly towards you and Patricia. They are probably about 100 feet to the south of you. Okay. Um, can I make like any sort of like fancy maneuvers in between buildings just to try to lose their vision on me? Absolutely, yeah. Um, give me both an acrobatics and a stealth. The acrobatics comes from Patricia and the stealth, I guess, comes from Schmidt. Okay. I rolled an 18 and a 20, so I'm guessing Schmidt crit the stealth. Okay. Uh, Patricia, acrobatics, it's not proficient, but it is based off dex, which is a plus four, which would be 22. Okay, yeah, pretty successful. Um, It seems that Schmidt perhaps has bought some time in the urban areas of Mauville to have lost these three bird pokemon not to say that they've given up on chasing him but for now he is not being watched besides maybe just people walking on the street who are just like oh that's weird what's that guy doing with the altaria you know okay yep we continue our plan till north till we get out of Mauville. okay yeah you can uh, continue north you can zoom on patricia assuming you're dashing you can probably get out of there in about uh 10 15 minutes and you are fully out of Mauville city you're in a more kind of urban area uh, you can see Mount Chimney off in the distance. Uh, you can see, again, the desert winds whipping and blowing around. You see a pond that is outside of the Windstraight home. And, yeah, what are you doing? Can I make another perception check to make sure that, like, I've lost everybody and that they're not following me? Yes, you may do that. Uh, mm, that's a six. <laughs> okay. Um, unsure. You're not sure one way or another. Um, there are some Pokemon near you at the moment. There is a Surskit and a Masquerade together on the pond, a little blue pond skater bug and its uh, evolved form that is somewhat of a moth or a butterfly, just hanging out together, eyeing you cautiously. And then up in a tree kind of towards the Windstraight estate, you see a Noctowl, a Pokemon you're familiar with, that's just looking at you. It's on the estate or it's... It's nearby. The tree is not on the estate. It is just on the way to it. Okay. Or, yeah, just turn to the berry farm. You're going to the berry farm. Start our way around the edge of the city, yeah. Okay. You are welcome to take that path. Assuming, so you're to the north of Marvel, so you're going to swoop around to the east, just through the forest, perhaps the unpopulated areas? Yeah. Okay. Movement through there should be no issue as the sun starts to set. Could you perhaps give me a stealth? Bro, I wish I was kidding. Yeah. Do you get a 20? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you've you've been rolling like crazy. You're the stealth god. The sun is starting to set. This is a, like precisely the time that the vision, presumably through Symmetra's eyes, was occurring. He looks over to the facade of the Silk Company building in Mauville, imagining that perhaps Sam is there or is not. He never got confirmation. Um, there's a helicopter circling around with a searchlight that's peering into various floors, and. Uh, it seems that there you can see smaller lights flickering on various floors from the inside. Perhaps people are still searching for Schmidt. Is there anything you do in Mauville City before you return to the berry farm? No. Okay. I think that will conclude, unless there's anything else that you want to do as sh- solo Schmidt, that will c- conclude Schmidt's little escapade. Hello, and thank you so much for listening to yet another Schmidt solo adventure here on Dunsparce and Drampop. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to our latest patrons, Jacob and Bree. All of our patrons on Patreon had access to this recording back at the start of May. When you sign up as a patron, you get access to all sorts of bonus content, including post-show discussions for every group episode, as well as early access to some spin-off and side things as they occur, such as this solo adventure. Check it out for yourself and sign up with a free trial at patreon.com slash dunsparse. Also check out our other links at linktree.com slash dunsparse. Our Discord community has been growing beautifully. We're so appreciative to everyone who's been joining lately, and it's been fostering some really great discussion around Pokemon Tabletop RPGs and more. Check it out if you're interested. We'll see you for the next session on June 11th. Okay. Escapade failure. You know what? It happens. Um, it was a pretty tough situation. Not saying it was impossible, but it's uh, not easy to break into a heavily monitored 
very wealthy company building. That is for sure. Mm-hmm. Spending time in that building, do you have any kind of inkling, perhaps maybe what Sam could have been looking for? Maybe she was looking for like her notebook or something she left behind. Because uh, we do have her journal. You have her journal, that's true. The end of the vision that took place in an office was her grabbing a folder. We didn't spend enough time on that floor to find anything. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Sag. Yeah. It was tricky. You didn't feel confident taking on the guards? No. I didn't want to have to like hurt people if I could just stealth my way through it. Says the guy who pulled out the gun to check the bullet count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, push comes to shove, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get fair. in there, I meet Symmetra, and then I find out Symmetra is the leader of NRG. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Just take her out right there. But. Okay. It was not needed. It was still... but it was something that we've been needing to do was check the gun. So yeah, it'll uh, perhaps it'll remain a mystery. Who knows? But we do have the information that she exists, which is more than we had mm-hmm. before. Really, I guess you did have the, like, I don't the know. note, but it failing still kind of fits with. It kind of fits that like Schmidt would do something this rash and it like be a failure. You know? Yeah. I don't think any Schmidt solo escapades ended on a good note. You know? <laughs> I guess this has been the third one, right? Yeah, uh, um, the first Mauville mm-hmm. gym challenge. And uh, uh, the surgery, guess, fever dream. The surgery, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, then, uh, and then this. Yeah, they've all been bittersweet at best, right? Um, mm-hmm. The gym challenge loss did result in, like, the coolest victory after. <laughs> that was, like, really sick. Uh, but the fight, it, yeah. But it was still a loss nonetheless. Um, there's no shot. Like, it's doubtful. It's impossible that you would have done that well the second time around if you did not have the experience from the first time, right? So, uh, yeah. I was pretty sick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we saw a Glalie, a Berserker, a Buffalant, a Magmortar, an Arcanine. There were probably more Mons in there as well. What were the birds? Arcanine, that was the one. You were saying, like, with Tiger Stripes, and I'm... Because it was right after Magmortar. I'm like, I like the vibe. No, it's not bipedal. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arcanine wasn't the one I couldn't figure out. 